course, markets did try to take some time to figure out what we exactly got from uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell yesterday afternoon. Uh, we are now decidedly to the downside in the wake of all that. Investors, at least some of them out there, thinking perhaps there's no pivot coming anytime soon. Let's bring in Scott Colburn, Managing Director of Active Fixed Income at TD Asset Management. Scott, let's try to run down what happened. It was a wild afternoon yesterday <laughs> afternoon, obviously. Uh, yeah. well, we, don't, we seem to have come to maybe a bit of a market consensus as to what we got from uh, Jerome Powell. What was it? The, the, you know, the statement was basically clear. The rates still have to go up higher, but that the acknowledgement that monetary policy works with lags and there's a cumulative of effect of, on the economy of those lags. And so that to the market's uh, initial reaction was, was you know, sort of a, a positive reaction because we had hoped for some sort of acknowledgement of a pivot or a slower pace of rate hikes. The press conference with uh, Governor Powell sort of dampened everything. And, and basically, he, he framed it three ways. He said, look, first we have to think about the pace. And we acknowledge that the pace has been very rapid and that pace is going to change going forward. And we've seen that in other central banks, the Bank of Canada, as you just mentioned. So the pace is going to slow for sure. But he's switching the, the focus to the, you know, the destination, the end of it, where in our world, the bond world is called the terminal rate. And where is that rate? And he acknowledged that since September, when we last sort of got an update on the forecast, it's higher than when it was then, which was about around four and a half, four and three quarter percent. So we're going to have a higher terminal rate and we're not exactly sure. And so that dampened the market's expectation and certainly the duration of this sort of you know, tightening cycle will be longer. And the combination of the latter two of those bullet points, the, you know, the higher terminal rate and the duration of that dampened markets and you know, bonds uh, moved higher, uh, flattened the curve, so the short rates moved higher than the longer rates. And then certainly it had a dampening effect on the equity market. It was interesting, as you said, the statement, and the statement did give you that little bit of uh, indication like we got from the Bank of Canada, hey, we've done a lot, yep. and maybe we need, need to reflect on what we've done. Uh, but then, you know, as you said in the press conference, it felt like the Jerome Powell that we got at Jackson Hole. Exactly. You, you go into this event thinking, oh, he's probably going to tell us, don't worry, we're going to ease up, and we're going to not cause too much pain, and just very stern. If there was one word that struck out to me, just he just seemed that he's on that stern path. And he, you know, acknowledged that if you look back in history, it, uh, the mistake is being premature in moving, pivoting, cutting, uh, pausing. Uh, that is history's lesson is that don't be uh, premature on that, that uh, if anything, he's going to err on the, on the side of over tightening and rather than under tightening. And so uh, that is, you know, uh, definitely a, a stern message. So that takes us probably through the end of this year and into yes. 2023. You talked about, you know, the end point and then the duration of hanging around that end point. And as you said, uh, Chair Powell indicating it, we didn't get a fresh dot plot, right? That no, didn't come December. this time around. Yeah. So it seems to be a hint that, you know, we're, when we finally end up at that place where we want to be, maybe it's higher than you previously thought and we're going to stay there for some time. What does that do to the markets? Well, from a bond investor's point of view, it means that, you know, we continue to have pressure on the front end of the yield curve. And, you know, short end rates going up more than longer end rates, which is flattening of the yield curve and in general, all rates higher. So, you know, we're going to continue to see bond yields higher and, uh, you know, the destination, you know, now we have a lot of, uh, you know, speculation. Where do, where does the Fed funds rate go now? It's at 375 to 4% is the destination um, 5%. Is it five and a quarter? Is it five and a half percent? So I think it's, you know, Probably five, five and a quarter is where I would land on. But we've seen the domestic U.S. economy, uh, particularly the consumer, uh, the jobs market, remain resilient. So we're going to start to, you know, we're in the data-dependent world. They've, they've definitely emphasized that. And, you know, we're going to get new data tomorrow. Yeah, it on feels Friday, like a buckle up kind of thing. Yeah, right? <laughs> so we'll get the jobs data. Maybe, you know, it's definitely the pace of jobs growth is slowed, but it's still solid. Um, you know, the Fed acknowledged that uh, yesterday. They said, look, you know, it's, things haven't really ratcheted down on the job side and it's too strong to even, even begin this pivot uh, process. So we'll see that, we'll see CPI next week. So there's, there's a definitely data dependency element to this, but uh, I think we have some way to go. When it comes, you mentioned the fact that Jerome Powell saying it too, that the labor market is still strong, it is still tight. When it comes to inflation, are we getting any sense that central banks are starting to win this fight, even just like perhaps not even winning it, but putting a dent in it? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, the, you know, when we first started to discuss the, the, the oversize and the overshoot on inflation, it was the, you know, it was COVID uh, shocks, it was supply chains, it was inflation and energy shocks. Um, and that is definitely waning. We've definitely seen, an, you know, a, a turn on that side. We're seeing the evidence that the rate of uh, increase in headline CPI is going down. So all that is working in favor of a lower inflation in next year. And, uh, you know, when you look into the, the bond market, uh, you know, details, it definitely shows that inflation is going down, headline inflation closer to 3% sort of uh, in the second, third quarter of next year. That being said, the core, you know, the labor market, the, you know, the, the sticky element of core inflation is, is the challenge. And so to the central bank's point, particularly the Fed, it has some way to, more ways to do, to reduce demand here to, you know, equilibrate the supply-demand imbalance in the economy. Before we get off the central bank discussion, uh, the Fed, obviously very important, but not the only central bank in the world. We, we heard from the Bank of England today, right? And it uh, didn't sound like good news to me. Look, they raised rates 75 basis points, but they did push a little bit back on how far rates are going to go. So that was a little bit of a surprise to the market uh, in the sense that the, you know, Governor Bailey said, look, we're going to see... Um, you know, if we follow what's priced into the market and the path that's priced into the market, that we'll see a sustained period of uh, recessionary growth. And I think that surprised the market a little bit. But there's definitely uh, room to, to continue to, to, to see rates higher. I think this is the challenge for all central banks. The Bank of Canada acknowledged it. The Bank of England today acknowledged it. We're going into a, you know, um, you know the, the, a low growth environment. Is it a recessionary? How how deep of a recession next year in 2023. And that has implications obviously for bond markets, equity markets, credit markets, and um, you know, not all economies are gonna be aligned as we have over the last year. We're gonna to start to see that differentiation emerge. Mm -hmm.